Hi everyone, it's Simon here again. Now, customers are the lifeblood of any business, and so it stands to reason that if we can better understand our customers, then we've got a much better chance of building a strong business. Now, in this session, I'm gonna introduce you to a really practical approach that can help you build products and services that customers love. Now, it can also help you find success much more quickly than you would otherwise, and that approach is called customer discovery. Now, before we start this session, uh, I just want to explain that you know I'm going to be talking about business a lot, but once again, the principles in this session can be equally applied to community and social projects without any problem. Secondly, uh, logically, this session is going to make more sense if you've checked out the, the idea napkin and the business model canvas session first. So a quick overview of what we're going to cover in this session. I'm going to explain what customer discovery is, I'm gonna make clear why it's important to you. And finally, we're gonna spend the chunk of the session walking through how to do it. So whenever we have a new idea for a business, we make a lot of assumptions about what we think is gonna happen, about the kind of people that we think are gonna value our product or service, the way that they're gonna buy it, the way that we're gonna engage them, the amount that we can sell it for, all kinds of things. Now, when you first do your business model canvas, this is what it effectively looks like. You're preparing it in isolation, you're sketching out a business model you think might work, but basically all you have at this stage is your best guess about a, what, custom, what a customer want and about what might work. Now I mentioned at the top of this session that success starts with understanding our customers, but it's much easier to say that than it is to do it. And so that's why we're so interested in understanding this process called customer discovery, which is a structured, qualitative as opposed to quantitative approach to engaging with customers and validating the assumptions that must be true for our business or our business idea to have potential and succeed. So why is this approach actually something that you should be focusing your attention on? Well, firstly, um, let's go back to the session that we did on the business model canvas. And I mentioned in that session that traditionally, the way a lot of people have started businesses is, is to have an idea, to write a business plan, to form a team, to obtain funding, and then to bring their idea to market in a big ta-da moment. And they open the doors of the shop and they wait for customers to come. Now, the danger with that approach is that if you've got it wrong and you, the assumptions that you made weren't true and customers aren't interested in what you've built, then you've just wasted a lot of time and money and energy and resources in doing that. Now the main reason that the businesses fail is that they fail to provide a product or a service that people value. So they simply don't have that fit between what, they, what it is they're providing and the customer that they're seeking to serve. Now what customer discovery can do for us it can take us right back to the beginning of this process, right back to the stage where we're working on our business model canvas. And it, what it does is it helps us to validate the assumptions that we're making. So the first thing is that we do, we have to sort of validate our assumptions. And you'll remember, again, back in the business model canvas session, where we looked at doing, um, turning our lemonade business into a bottled lemonade business. And so, you know, we had some great feedback from customers. They told us that they really liked our product. And we started thinking, well, you know, what's a different kind of business we could run? Maybe we can start, you know, scaling this up, um, packaging our product and selling it more broadly. And all we had at that stage were some assumptions. And so we thought that our product would be bottled lemonade. And our big assumption was that we could sell that to local convenience stores. Now imagine the situation, if we went down the business plan path, if we went away, we spent you know three and a half weeks writing our business plan, we went and took a loan from the bank, we developed our bottling facility, um, et cetera, et cetera, and then we tried to go and sell our product to convenience stores, and they said to us, well actually we're not interested, then we'd be in trouble. Now if we fo instead followed this customer discovery approach, and we thought, well, okay, we think our customer is going to be the local convenience store. So that's assumption number one. Uh, we need to have them as a customer for this business to work. What we could do instead is actually just go and talk to the convenience store and ask them, before we've spent any money on bottling or even developed our product, whether they'd be interested in buying a bottled soft drink product from us. And they might say yes, and we'd say, right, well, we don't have it yet, we're gonna come back when we do. 
or they might say, actually, we've got a contract with a local distributor and that's the only person we're allowed to buy drinks from. Then all of a sudden we know that we need to change our business model if this thing is going to work and our customer maybe needs to be a larger drinks map distributor or something like that. So that's one example um, of how customer discovery can be used, which we'll go into in a lot more detail a bit later in this session. Okay, so the second thing is, is it boosts our chances of success. And so again, by going out and by finding the critical assumptions, which if are not true, can derail our whole business idea, by identifying those at this really early stage and validating them, then we give ourselves a much, much better chance of succeeding. And finally, and this is a really big one, that we dramatically reduce our chances of expensive failure. Um, and I've written expensive failure there because failure is actually something that we want to embrace when we're starting a business. Because whenever we fail, we have a remarkable insight into what doesn't work. But the talent with failure is learning how to do it in really small, affordable ways that you can bounce back from. So you can pocket the learning and then sort of change your approach and go back again. What we don't want is expensive failure. Again, using the business plan example where you've borrowed the money, you've invested it in doing something irreversible, and then you find out that that thing doesn't work. Now, I love this, uh, this cartoon. It really characterizes what this whole process is about. Okay, so how do we do customer discovery? Now, there are two really effective ways you can do this. The first way is by talking directly to customers uh, and observing what they do. And the second way, uh, the second approach is through running experiments in which we put people, uh, real people through an experience and we record what happens. Now, in this session, we're gonna be focusing on the first arm about how to talk to customers. But I will be following this video up with another one where we look at how to test and run experiments on people. Now, how do we do customer discovery? That's gonna be a big question that many of you have. And fortunately for us and for me, there is an absolutely remarkable resource that's available to you. Uh, now you can either buy it from Amazon, it's about 11 pounds in this country, or you can download it for free. Uh, now I've given you the link where you can do that, it's bit.ly uh, slash QYLP humans. And so um, if there's one thing you take away from this entire session, it's to download and read a copy of this book. Um, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's about 80 pages long, they're really small pages, it's really easy to read, but there's so much valuable insight in there for anybody who is thinking about starting a business, a not-for-profit venture, whatever it might be, about this customer-led approach to starting a successful venture. Okay, so a quick note about the process. Uh, it's very, uh, there's a lot of detail about the process in the book. Now, I'm not going to replicate the entire book in this presentation. There's no value in any of us for that. What I will touch on um, is an overview of the process and some of the important points, which I'll do right now. Now, the process that we're gonna go through, this five-step process, is who do you want to learn from? What do you want to learn? How will you get to those people? When you do get to them, how can you ensure that you have an effective session? And finally, making sense of what you learn or observe. Again, uh, the book is full of cartoons and this is another really great one. And it's all about finding the right customer, finding those right people who can actually give us the answers that we need to know. So when we're considering about who we want to learn from, we need to have an opinion about who our market actually is. And so there's some prompts there. Who's the typical customer gonna be? Who is the earliest adopter? So who is that, um, of our whole group of customers, who is that one person that feels the pain or the need for this product or service most keenly and likes to use things first before anybody else? And finally, who are the critical partners gonna be? And so not customers, but are there other organizations? And so again, going back to your business model canvas, are there key partners that you, that you need here to have on board for this project or this venture to work. To give you an example, um, if we were using our bottled lemonade business again, then the person, who do you want to learn from? 
the person we'd want to learn from is the person who'd be paying us for our product. And in our first guess, we thought that was going to be the owners, the owners of local convenience stores. A couple more examples. And so if you were trying to start a business uh, that, re- that was an on-call vet service, and so vets traveling to people in their home to attend to their animals, then the kinds of people you'd need to speak to, your customers, uh, would probably be twofold. Firstly, uh, there would be pet owners, uh, and secondly, would be vets, obviously, to validate that they'd be interested in taking their service and operating in a mobile way. Uh, likewise, the, giving the example of an online marketplace for plumbers. And so, again, in any kind of marketplace, you have two sides to it, those people that want to buy the services and those that want to sell the services. And so, again, you need to make sure you speak to both of these customer groups to validate whether what you're providing is something that they value. Okay, so the big thing here is when we're looking at our assumptions and trying to work out what we want to learn or what we want to get out of the customers is that we need to start with those assumptions that are both highly important for our business and also fairly uncertain because the combination of these two elements um, are what means that they have the possibility to derail our entire idea. A really fair question to ask at this point is, well, how do I know what the assumptions I'm making are? And so a really good source of these uh, can be the business model canvas. And so every entry you've made on the canvas um, suggests an assumption that you're making. Our second source of assumptions can be this really useful uh, series of prompt questions, which I've got on the next slide. Now, again, there's a more comprehensive list of these questions in the book, Talking to Humans. But by answering these questions, you can very quickly identify a list of starting assumptions that you need to validate in connection with your business. My target customer will be a really, really important one. You remember at the heart of the business model canvas and at the idea napkin were these two concepts of, you know, what is your value proposition and who is your customer? So the second dot point, the problem my customer wants to solve is. And so that alludes to the value proposition. The third dot point, my customer's need can be solved with. And so that's the answer asking the question, what are we offering? What's our product or what's our service? My primary customer acquisition tactic will be. And so that's how we're going to actually find and convert our customers. And so when you fill out your business model canvas, that's going to be your channel. I will make money revenue by. So again, you know, what's your strategy for making cash? And then this last one, which is really great kind of catch all is what assumptions do we have that if proven wrong would cause this business to fail? And this is a great question to ask to help you prioritize your assumptions and identify which ones you need to start validating first. Okay, point number three, how will you find your subjects? So the people you're actually going to physically go and speak to to start uh, questioning and trying to validate these assumptions. And really, the only answer here is strangers. Now, this may well sound confronting for some of you, the idea of going out and talking to strange people about your idea, but it's something that you need to swallow as an entrepreneur. So this could be the difference between the success or not of your venture, and so it's something that you need to embrace. Now, the first point on this list, aiming for one degree of session, is an absolutely golden rule of this process. No friends, no family. And the reason we say that is that they will not give you impartial responses because they know you and they care about you. And so you need to find people that are happy to speak really candidly and to put it bluntly, don't care if they hurt your feelings. Now, point number two, getting people to speak to you. And so we aren't talking about haranguing people or knocking on doors, uh, but you do need to be a bit creative about the approach you're going to use to get people to give up a small amount of time to stop and talk to you. Point number three on this list, fish where the fish are. And so that means uh, think about where the people you need to speak to congregate, uh, where you're likely to find them, and go and do your interviewing there. Okay, number four, some tips on how to have an effective session. Now, there are a few golden rules to follow here. The first dot point on this list is to do your interviews in person. And that's really because observing the person and their mannerisms and their actual nonverbal communication is going to give you a much greater degree of insight than if you simply speak to someone. 
it also makes it much easier to build up a sense of rapport with someone and have a conversation with them about this rather than it feeling like an interview. Now, point two flows straight on from that. You know, this is a human exchange. Start with some warm-up questions and keep it really human. It's a conversation you want to have. You want the people you're speaking to to be really comfortable. Number three is another really, really important point here, and that's to disarm your own biases. And so this is really challenging because this is your idea and you already have in your own mind uh, some preconceived notions about what it is that people want or you think they want. Uh, And so to go in, you need to go into these conversations with customers and to leave those biases at the door and be prepared to hear things that are at odds with what you believe. Because if you close yourself to those and you only hear what you want to hear, then this entire process will be a waste of time. Now, point number four is another really good one. And I know that I'm saying that all of these dot points are good. And I guess they are golden rules, so they're all going to be golden. But number four, um, now, there's a bit of art to, 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 to carrying this process out. And so this fourth point is to, how to get someone talking. And so if you ask direct questions, then it can be a little difficult to get somebody to imagine responses outside of that. And so you may miss pieces of insight. And so sometimes a better way to go about this, get them to tell a story. And what I mean by that is by asking a question like, can you tell me about the last time that you dot, dot, dot. And so it's very broad and it enables the respondent to speak about the, the issues and the different, different elements of that that were important to them. And finally, our fifth dot point, listen, don't talk. And so you're there to guide the conversation, but the insight you want is inside of the head of the recipient or your potential customer. And so the aim is to listen far, far more than you talk in the interview. And finally, making sense of it all. And so again, in the book, there's some quite specific guidance on how to actually compile everything that you I guess pull together over the course of your customer interviewing and there will be quite a lot of data and so if you're doing a b2c or like a business selling to consumers or the end customer um, then the sort of a rough guide is to speak to between 50 and 100 individuals because you need to speak to a large enough number of people to start getting some statistical relevance here and so in order to make sense of that when you finish this process you must 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 take good notes um, once you've got notes, then you know you can start to look for patterns and apply a certain amount of judgment to look for meaning from what you've gleaned. Okay, some pro tips. First one, practice, practice, practice. This is an entirely, or for most of you, it will be an entirely new skill and a new way of thinking about starting a business. And so to start with, you're probably not going to be very good at it. But the great thing is, with practice and with the book and with the content of this session, you will improve very quickly. And so pick a few targets. Don't start with the most important people you want to speak to. Go out there, practice it. Improve, improve, improve. Number two, no focus groups or surveys. So remember, this is a human process. It's about talking to people and looking for real insight. And so we aren't after surveys. They're very, very one dimensional. They don't offer any or much opportunity for insight at all. Uh, The same thing with focus groups and with group discussions. Again, that's not what we're after. We're after individual engagement. Thirdly, I've mentioned before, We want stories and not speculation. Humans are spectacularly bad at forecasting how they will respond in the future. And so a much more effective way of doing this process is by getting them to reflect on past behavior and by telling a story about something that they've done. Flatter subjects. And so if you are trying to get an interview with someone, flattery can get you a lot of places. Okay, we're all humans. We love to hear this kind of stuff. And finally, a really, really important one, never pitch or sell. And so there can be a temptation when you're talking to people to ask them something like, uh, would you use a service that dot, dot, dot. And so that is not the intention of this process. The aim of this process is to understand the problems that our customers have. Because if we understand the problems, then we can then develop a solution that we've got is gonna have a much better chance of addressing that problem in a way that the customer values. And so we aren't here to get feedback on our idea at this stage, that will come at a later stage, and we aren't here to pitch our ideas. Pro tips continued, 
Uh, this is a really, really important one. So knowing how to question someone to actually get them talking and start getting insight um, is a real skill in itself. And so something you can use to really help here is by asking open-ended questions. And so start your questions using words like uh, who or what or why and how, and avoid questions that suggest a yes or a no answer. Is, are, would, and do you. Uh, third dot point here, the five whys. So this is something I learned from an entrepreneur recently, and it's a really simple and really, really powerful questioning technique. And so uh, it's as simple as it sounds. It's a, really about asking why five times. So if you ask somebody, uh, why did you do that? And they'll give you a response. And then you ask them again, why? And it's like peeling an onion, but you know you need to ask why three or four, or maybe even five times in order to get down to the real reason or the real motivation for taking an action and so if you're sort of having these conversations and you don't feel like you're you know getting any real insight don't be afraid to ask why a few times like the curious four-year-old keep asking why and finally when you sort of finish your sessions again you're going to be running a lot of these sessions if you um, undertake this program effectively this program through this approach effectively and so remember to write up your key insights as soon as you finish your finish your sessions because if you don't they will fade and then at the end of the process you won't be able to effectively pull things together and look for that deep insight okay zoom park you're probably sitting there at the moment and wondering okay well there's been a lot of theory here um, but what does this process actually look like in practice here is a video that can show you exactly that so zoom park they placed first in this international business model competition back in 2012 and again so you, you in this video you'll see the business model canvas and you'll see that the steps that this group went through to validate their own business model and they explain the approach they took to customer discovery and so i'd encourage you to check it out just hit that link there it'll take you straight through to vimeo A few resources to finish up. The book is the top link. If you're really into this topic and want to watch some more videos, I've included a second resource for you there. And then the third link will take you to the Zoom Park video where you can see what it looks like in practice. And that's all I wanted to say to you about customer discovery. Um, I'm re I really genuinely mean this and I say this is one of the most powerful techniques that you can start practicing if you're looking to start a new venture and so I really encourage you to download the book to become familiar with it and to start practicing it. Bye for now.